Okay, so this tutorial is going to be slightly different than my previous ones in that I'm not just going to be going over features directly. I'm kind of just going to show you my read topology workflow in Blender and just show you some cool features along the way. Um, I'm, going to I'm going to be using a few add-ons and I'm not sure if they're included in the trunk Blender at this point. If not, just go to uh, graphical.org and download the latest one. We go up here to File, uh, User Preferences under Add-ons, and then Mesh. I'm going to show you B Surfaces GPL Edition, Grease Pencil, Read Topology, Loop Tools, and Relax. Alright, so how I'm going to start this off is just by showing you um, Read Topology using snapping, which is the best way, but it does have one problem in that it snaps to the mesh by projecting from your screen, which can be a problem that I'll go over later. But I'm going to uh, Shift A to add a plane. I'm going to center it really quick. Tab to enter edit mode and G to move it. I'm just going to rotate it into place. Okay, so here you see my snapping function. Uh, clicking that will turn on snapping. Click it again to turn it off. If you hold control at any point, it's just going to do the opposite of what this is. So if you have snapping on and hold control, it's just going to turn it off while control is held and vice versa. So here I'm going to choose what I want it to snap to. I chose face, and then this option here you want to toggle it on because that means it's going to snap to faces of other objects, which in this case is the mesh behind it. So I'm going to turn snapping on, and you see now it, when I move these vertices, it's projecting it onto the front of the mesh, which is what I want. When that can be problematic is if you have vertices behind it, and then you move them, it's going to move all the vertices projected from your screen plane. So you really just have to be careful of what you're selecting and doing it this way. It's really accurate, but that is one problem. Uh, if you want to edit vertices, like say if you wanted to stretch a cylinder over the arm or something, you would do so using the shrink wrap modifier, which I talked about in one of the previous tutorials. And you can just check that out. Alright, so one feature that I want to talk about, which is, ex as far as I know, it's exclusive to Blender, but I'm not positive on that. Uh, basically, you can select any vertices. Uh, it can be one vertice up to or one vertex or as many as you want, and then extrude by Control Left clicking. And what's cool about this is it follows the general path that you take it on. So, say I wanted this to curve like this, you can see that it rotates the next vertices that I'm clicking, and it additionally rotates the the, the set before it. This is really useful for doing things like mouths and eyes, obviously, but it's also really nice for a lot of things because it just makes my life pretty easy. Say I wanted to follow this pectoral muscle, I just click along it and it does a really good job of doing that. So just as a rule of thumb for retopology, you're often going to find yourself doing a lot of cleanup work if you don't kind of think it out to begin with. So to make your life easier, the best advice I can give you is just by starting with as broad of shapes as possible and trying to close the gaps before you go in and fill in the details. Uh, that's not always going to work, especially if you're doing something where you want to capture a lot of the silhouette or whatever, but it, it's just a general rule of thumb to live by. So, say I was doing this pectoral muscle. Instead of extruding the, the shapes that I wanted along it, I'm just going to go ahead and extrude it to go across the whole muscle and then go in and subdivide it after the fact. By doing this, A, it saves me a bunch of steps, it gives me cleaner topology, and if I were to extrude this all the way down to here and say across the back before I did anything else, I would know that all my vertices are going to match up at one point, which can honestly save you a huge amount of time later. So say I have this, now I go in here and control R, that'll do a loop cut and then I can scroll to add more subdivisions. Now when I add that, it's a nice even topology and it's just really simplified. I do the same thing down here. And then just do some cleanup. Now obviously for this kind of model, I'm going to want more detail than that, but you get the idea. It's just a huge time saver to do that kind of stuff. So the same thing applies, just control left click and you can uh, just take care of your main muscles or whatever silhouette you're trying to follow. 
uh, you can do this with any amount of vertices, but it does get kind of harder to control the more you do. Okay, so here's the first ad I'm going to show you. This is kind of unnecessary to do it right here, but you'll get the picture. Um, so the ad the add-on I enabled was loop tools, which you can access from the toolbar over here, or you can push W. So W, loop tools, and then here are your options. You'll get more options here in the operator menu once you do it, but you can play with those later. I'm not really going to go over it. Um, what I'm going to show you is bridge. So if I select these three and then these three and do loop tools bridge, it just does that, which is a feature that was missing and Blender was really hurting for, so it's great that Loop Tools was able to add that. Uh, again, you can do that with any amount of vertices. Okay, so that's uh, that'll get you going really quickly. Um, another huge thing that people really like about things like uh, Topo Gun and 3D Coat is uh, the ability to paint on polygons, which they recently added. Uh, you do it using the grease pencil, so if you go over here, uh, if that's not showing, just push N, and that'll bring that up go to new grease pencil and you want to select surface because that'll make you draw on the surface of this mesh uh, and then over here on the left in the toolbar uh, push T if that's not showing uh, just find grease pencil check use sketching session because that will allow you to draw multiple lines So then hit draw um, say I draw across here hit enter, you see that it's projected onto that mesh, and then retopo this button here, just hit that, and it adds it to a different object, but you see it uh, it does the job, so that's cool. Uh, previously it didn't work for things like circles for eyes or mouse, but as far as I know it does now, you just have to be really careful about how you draw them, so just make sure it touches, and if I were to do this, see that it does a good job. A feature kind of similar to that is uh, the BPL surface which is a little different but you can select vertices that you want to extrude and it basically allows you to define with the grease pencil how you want it or the path you want it to extrude along. Uh, here you see the options cross and follow that's basically just how many subsections you want it divided into. Uh, this is going to be overridden by how many vertices you select if you just want to do it as an extrusion. So here if I go to draw again, and I draw like this, I'm drawing lines perpendicular to the path I want it to go along. So hit enter, and now you'll see these will extrude along that path. Ignoring how many lines I drew, it will uh, go to how many you select over here. So now if I add surface, you see that it added those. This can be a good way to quickly topologize also. Um, it's a pretty neat feature. All right, so I'm just gonna shrink wrap the legs. So go here, add modifier, shrink wrap, uh, select whatever mesh you're retopologizing. And then the principle is the same. You just wanna represent the broader shapes first. Um, purposes here that's probably fine uh, then I can go in and subdivide it a few times add a few loops it should be fine uh, and then if you want to see what that is and edit it you can do this and that applies it in edit mode uh, as you move these around you'll notice they behave kind of strangely and that's because when you edit it in edit mode it's actually editing the cage the two solutions to this are when you if you want to edit it like this just hold control to use snapping and just remember that you're projecting by doing that so don't edit vertices behind the mesh or the much better solution is just to apply the shrink wrap modifier at which point the geometry is actually applied and you can edit it like normal okay so moving on um, a lot of people don't like that there are no end gons in blender which can be a pain in the ass but it's not really that bad uh, people also really don't like the knife tool, but I found it's actually a lot more effective than people give it credit for. You just select everything, hold K, say I wanted a loop to go down like that, just hold K, go across here, loop, 
looks kind of messy, but if I relax it, you see that it actually did exactly what I wanted it to. So it's a pretty nice tool. Uh, it's really underused. Understandably, uh, without Angons, a lot of times if you want to redirect loops or change topology, instead of just doing it on top of blank polygons with however many shapes that you need, uh, you're just going to have to delete, which really takes like no time at all, but uh, it obviously bothers some people. Uh, as you can see here, it took me all of five seconds to do this. Um, and here's a perfect example of what happens all the time in retopology. I have an extra loop here that's not matching up here. So basically what people don't need to realize is that if you have an extra loop, it has to go somewhere. So if it's not going straight, then I have to redirect it or I have to turn it into a triangle. Those are basically my options. Uh, in this case, I'm going to redirect it um, down here. Just to show you an example. So I have to go like this like that, and there we go, it's redirected. You get better at that, but it's something that will take you a little bit. Um, to redirect an already existing loop, just select an edge, control E, you can rotate it clockwise, that looks retarded, but if you select and relax, you can see more what it just did. Uh, it took this loop, redirected it up there, this loop redirected it there, and this loop redirected it there. Uh, whoops, I mean it takes this loop and redirects it there. And finally I'm just going to show you a few tricks I've developed to relax your geometry a little bit and make it look better. You can obviously do this just by selecting the verts you want to relax and doing so, but uh, I find that I like to store vertex groups for things that, for vertices that I want to lock. Uh, I'll show you what I mean. So uh, I recommend adding a shrink wrap modifier again, then go over here, add a vertex group. Uh, I'll just call it locked. So say I wanted to relax my mesh, but I want these vertices to stay here because they're defining a crease. I'll just assign them. I'll do the same thing up here. These. Assign them. You see now if I select, they show back up. Um, say I wanted to move these down here. To define this crease and I don't want them to move when I relax you'll see how this works add one or two loops now say I want these vertices to be evenly spaced along here just go to loop tools space that'll give for a better result when I relax um, I'll assign those as well I'm going to evenly space these then assign them and I'll do the same thing here I can just select two vertices control V select vertex path then space them assign those now when I select everything oh let me I forgot to assign the rest of these assign that so now when I select you see all these vertices that I just assigned are selected I can hide them and now when I select the entire model I can just relax it and you see that it's still considering where the hidden vertices are, it's just not doing anything to them. So now when I all, when I unhide them, you can see that it smoothed this out considerably. Uh, I'm just going to reproject that. So that's it. Hopefully you learned a significant amount. I've had to do a lot of retopology for work lately, so I've been playing around with a lot of programs, and I was pretty sold on 3D code for a while. But when I went back to Blender, uh, I just found myself liking a lot of the tool sets a little bit more. Anyway, enjoy and happy blending.